super retro force. How can one Tales game be so bad that it gets demoted from a mainline game to a spin-off? Well, I played Tales of the Tempest, and I'm ready to tell you all about this interesting adventure. I love the Tales series. I've been playing them ever since the original Tales of Fantasia on the Super Famicom in 1995. When I heard that the series was jumping to DS, I didn't know what to think, but safe to say I was excited. Unfortunately, Tales of the Tempest never got an official release in the West, but on April Fool's Day 2013, a full translation was released by Absolute Zero Translations. Originally released as a mainline title, Namco Bandai announced with the announcement of the next game, Tales of Innocence, the Tales series would be divided between mainline, or mothership titles, and spin-off, escort titles and that Tales of the Tempest was now known as an escort title. Why would it get demoted to an escort title when it was originally a mothership title? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today, but before we begin, have you played Tales of the Tempest before? If so, what did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below, and let's get to talking all about Tales of the Tempest. So, Tales of the Tempest takes place on the continent of Arula where humans live alongside a half-human, half-beast race called Laymons. Humans are afraid of the Laymons and shun them due to the events of the Beast Wars 100 years before the start of the game. Tales of the Tempest follows the story of Caius Qualls, a boy who lives with his foster father in the town of Fern. One day the town is attacked by these strange creatures called spots that devour layman souls. After this attack, a knight shows up injured to the town of Fern, and Caius is left responsible to look after him. As this knight is dying, the knight presents Caius with a gem claiming it's called a patient and it needs to be delivered to the town of Janna. After he receives this gem, Caius starts his journey. He's joined by his childhood friend Rubia, and while adventuring through the Black Forest north of Fern, they meet Tilkis, the prince of a faraway kingdom, Sanchivia, and his bodyguard, Forest. And once they arrive in Janna, they meet a priestess soldier named Arya. During their journey, Caius finds out that this patient is actually the soul of a Laymon, and they're needed to create this Law of Life. Unsure of what the Law of Life is, and why the church is trying to create it, Caius and Pals continue their adventure across the continent to uncover its mysteries. The story of Tales of the Tempest is quite good, but it's short. And I mean, it's incredibly short. When I finished the game after doing all the side quests, and fighting all the battles I could, I clocked in at only 10 hours. As this game is short, the story feels very rushed. There are lots of emotional moments, but as the game is rushed, none of them stick around long enough to really leave any sort of impact. Same goes for character development. Sure, there are these campfire scenes, but they seem almost completely pointless because they show up and disappear so quickly that you don't have the time to get attached to the character. It's a shame because this could be up there as one of the better tale stories, if only it was given the chance to shine. Alright, so let's start with the combat. Tales of the Tempest utilizes the 3 on 3 LMBS, or Linear Motion Battle System. This combat system is similar to Tales of Rebirth, however only using 3 party members as opposed to Tales usually using 4 party members. You have 3 lines that you can run left and right across, like a classic Tales game, but you can attack a line either above or below you as well. I'm going to start this off by saying that Tales of the Tempest is incredibly clunky and makes some of the weirdest menu and combat choices. First of all, you can attack text to up, down, side, and neutral. These texts are performed by pressing the assigned direction and the B button simultaneously. This is standard Tales fare, so that might seem similar, but the thing is, you don't have an arts menu in battle. Which means, if you don't set your arts before you get into a battle, you have to wait until the battle is over to change things around. Not having an arts menu also means it's up to your AI to use their techs, including healing spells on their own. Tempest has some of the worst AI I have ever seen in any game ever. No matter how I set the AI strategy menu, the spellcasters will still run up to the enemies and physically attack. And it doesn't help that the strategy menu doesn't have any description for what each option specializes in. Anyways, each party member outside of the spellcasters, Ruby and Arya, have three levels of arts. Base, Master, and Arcane Arts. But you can only assign base arts to your character. This is another really strange mechanic. 
In order to use a master or arcane art, you need to use different base arts in order. For example, if you want to use double demon fang, you use one demon fang, followed by an immediate second demon fang. Or in order to use sword rain beta, use sword rain, followed by crescent slash, and then followed by rising falcon. It's not all that intuitive, and it just feels incredibly clunky. Not to mention these techs use stupid amounts of TP, and until I had an emerald or fairy ring to reduce TP usage, I found myself burning through my TP reserves in a single battle. Outside of battle, there really isn't much to talk about. You basically run from town to town, talking to NPCs. There's no customization, sure there's a few side quests, but every single one of these quests is just a fetch quest. Either running to one town, grabbing an item, and then running back to the previous town and giving that item, or go out into the world map, kill a bunch of this enemy, collect their horns or their loot, and then sell it to an NPC. It's really not that intuitive, it's honestly just kind of boring. Not to mention, the rewards really aren't much either. Usually these rewards are just titles, which give a slight stat increase when equipped, or a decent sum of gold. The menus also feel incredibly clunky. There are so many button presses just for simple actions. For example, your equipment menu, you choose item, choose equip, the type of equipment you want to equip, then the character, and then select the specific equipment you want to equip. All while the menu is moving incredibly slow, it feels like you're playing an NES game when it comes to how clunky the menu is. Lastly, I want to talk about the encounters. So Tales of the Tempest uses random encounters, and they're incredibly frequent. Even when using holy bottles, I didn't notice any difference. They are about every two to three steps at times. And speaking of holy and dark bottles, which are used to control the encounter rate, there is no indication that it's active or when the effect ends. It's minor, but it can be one of the most frustrating things in the world because when traveling from town to town, there is no fast travel or vehicles outside of ships, and that isn't available until the very end of the game. Like I said, minor gripe, but it can get annoying when the combat just isn't fun. All right, I'm gonna try and be nice here. The art style and graphics are, um, uh, well, they are colorful. Okay. This isn't only limited to Tempest, but I don't like that DS 3D look. Where every limb looks as if it's separate from the rest of the body, Tales of the Tempest uses this too. And I'm not a fan. I mean, I understand that Tales of the Tempest was the first DS Tales game, so it was a bit of an experiment, but it just looks so ugly. This is only restricted to character models. The rest of the world looks decent for a DS game. It's pretty bright, it's colorful, and for such a short game, you get to experience several different types of environments. Fields, deserts, snowy expanses, caverns, catacombs, you get a little bit of everything. It's kind of impressive considering the technology that Namco Bandai was working with. One thing I can be very positive about when it comes to presentation is the music. I actually really love the soundtrack of this game. I adore the boss battle theme, Confrontation. I was shocked that Tales of the Tempest had such a good soundtrack, mainly because you never hear anyone talk about it. Granted, that probably is due to the fact that no one actually plays the game for more than an hour because of how dull it is, but if Tales of the Tempest has one saving grace, it's definitely the soundtrack. I'd suggest checking it out if you get the chance to. Nothing is mind-blowing and is going to be super memorable for years on end, but it's all quite solid. All right. This is going to be short and sweet, just like Tales of the Tempest. I mentioned it earlier, but Tales of the Tempest is incredibly short. Doing most of the side quests and running around at the standard encounter rate, I clocked in about 10 hours or so when I beat the final boss. It's not because I rushed the game, the game is just that short. Normally, I'd say short RPGs are okay, but Tales of the Tempest really could have used a bit more length. Normally, when I talk about pacing, I talk about how the scenes are too long and drawn out. Well. The issue with Tales of the Tempest is the complete opposite. I mentioned it briefly before, but all of the emotional scenes or character development is just too quickly bypassed. These cutscenes just aren't long enough to have a lasting effect on you, so you quickly forget about what happened. In fact, the romantic scene between Caius and Rubia was like two sentences long. It really doesn't do anything for them. Honestly, if any Tales game could use a remake, it's Tales of the Tempest. If they could fix the combat, expand cutscenes, and just give some more excitement to the story events, I feel like Tempest could be up there as one of the best in the series, because I really like the cast of Tempest and the general plot. 
I know there were talks of a remake happening alongside Hearts R and Innocence R, but it never happened. Which I assume is due to the Vita dying far too early, and it's really a shame because I can't help but think just how great a remake of Tales of the Tempest could have been. So there you have it. Tales of the Tempest is... I don't say this often, but it's an actual bad Tales game. Normally, I'm more lenient to escort titles, but Tempest just fails in every aspect outside of the music. Would I ever suggest this to anyone? Maybe if you're an absolute diehard Tales fan and feel like you need to play every Tales game, but even then, don't go in expecting an amazing game. With that being said, are you interested in giving Tales of the Tempest a fair shot? Or have you played it before? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this review, keep in mind, I am actually reviewing every Tales game in the series. So if that interests you, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future Tales reviews. Want to check out my other Tales reviews? I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description below, or you can check out this review of Tales of Eternia, my personal favorite Tales game. This has been Shinky, thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.